Hey there everyone, my name is Overlord Moon, and today I'll be giving a guide on how to get started playing one of my favorite games, Town of Salem. While there are other guides out there, this game has undergone a massive rework a few months ago, and the format has changed completely since then. Also, the game has developed quite a bit over the years, so a lot of the older guides are outdated. In this video, I'll be explaining the very basics of Town of Salem and how to jump into the action. Town of Salem is what's considered a social deduction game, meaning that players are assigned hidden roles, after which they work to achieve the objective for their own secret role and or the team their role is assigned to. The thing about Town of Salem is that it's themed in a way which mimics the Salem Witch Trials. If you've ever played games like Mafia or Werewolf, you'll see that this game is very similar in nature to other social deduction games. Town of Salem is a game that costs about $5 for the PC. However, it's free as a mobile app for your Apple or Android device. Now, let's get into the mechanics of the actual game itself. Unlike Mafia and Werewolf, where the group of players are split into two opposing factions, Town of Salem has it where they are split into three. The three factions are the Town, the Mafia, and the Neutrals. The Town members comprise an uninformed majority. This means that the only person whose role they know is their own. It is their job to use the clues given by their roles to discover who the evil people are and to lynch them before it's too late. The Mafia makes up an informed minority. This means that they know who else is in their faction and everyone's roles in their faction. They can also talk to each other at night in their own private chat, and they can discuss strategy for the next few days as well as share information with each other. Their objective is to kill the town and neutral killing factions and outnumber them at the end of the game. The neutrals comprise an interesting faction, as there are subcategories within the neutrals that makes them unique. The neutrals make up an uninformed minority, but their objectives and goals for winning the game vary depending on which neutral category you end up finding yourself in. A serial killer, for example, is considered to be a neutral killer. This means that they have to kill town members and mafia members at night, and be the last one alive in order to win. Whereas a jester is considered to be a neutral evil, however, their win condition revolves around themselves getting lynched at any cost. Now that you've started your first game and gotten your role, you'll see a lot of things and icons you can click on your screen, and everything can seem confusing at first. However, there's no need to worry as I'm about to break down what everything means so that you'll have the best playing experience possible. What I did here was I took a screen capture from one of my more recent games just so I could freeze everything in time and really explain what each and everything on the screen means. So at the top right of your screen you have what's called a role card. This will tell you what your role's alignment is, what your goal to win is, any abilities you can perform, and any attributes about your role. If you want more information on what each and every role does, I will link the Wikipedia in the description below. Trying to explain what every single role does in a beginner video is way too complex and you will have way too much information overload, but that's your bread and butter right there that tells you what you're doing throughout the game. The bottom right of your screen is targets, and it is every player in the game, their position number, and their name next to each other, and then if you have a knight role, it allows you to select that player for your option. You will sometimes see people refer to players by their names, you'll sometimes see them referred to by their player numbers. I know mine isn't shown right now, but I am player number four this game, and my name is Young Money. In the middle of the screen, you will find two little icons. One of them looks like a piece of paper that's sort of torn, and another one has the quill with it. So the one that looks sort of torn is called the last will. What you do with the last will is you go ahead and you type up all your information, suspicions, etc. into that piece of paper and you save it at night. If you die by any means, this is what is shown to the town um, along with your role being revealed to the rest of the town. This is sort of your last will, you could say, at sharing information with the town. At the bottom left corner of the screen, you will see the town chat and then a very small chat bubble icon. If you click on that chat bubble icon, you can pop up a window on the left hand side of your screen that will show you every single thing that has been said and every single thing about who voted who. For instance, if you lynch a mafia member and you see that two other people voted innocent on this person for some reason, you know that you can go and check those two innocent voters out. This is probably the most useful feature button, command, thing on your screen, but for some reason it has the smallest icon, I don't really understand that. At the top left of your screen, you will see the graveyard. The graveyard will show who has died, what their role is, their cause of death, and any last will or death note that was left next to their body. 
The graveyard is a very useful place to find information, as townies who gather useful information are typically the ones who are targeted by these evil roles. You can use the information found in their last wills to help accuse and lynch the evil roles. Lastly, we have the role list, which is right next to the graveyard. The role list tells you which roles are in the game, or which roles could possibly be in the game, as seen with the random talent option at the bottom. This role list is the one from the classic game mode, which if you are new, you will be forced to play classic for I believe at least 10 games before you can play like ranked practice. If you are new to the game, I would recommend that you stick to classic for at least 10 to 15 games so you can get an understanding of what the roles do before you go on to ranked practice where you'll see a role list that looks more vague, which I will go ahead and put on the screen now. See what I mean? One last thing I'd like to touch up on on the role list is that if you don't know what a specific role does and you've not had time to look at the Wikipedia page about it, you can just click on the role in the role list and it should give you a short brief description that you would find from its role card. Now that we've gone through and explained what everything on your screen means, let's get into the actual gameplay of the game itself. The game is split into two separate cycles the night phase and the day phase. The nighttime phase is 30 seconds long and gives you ample time to perform your night action and write in your last will. During the day, if you are not dead, you should be able to post your results into your last will and you will be able to share this information with the town for the next day. In between the nighttime and daytime phases, a recap of who has died will be played. This will reveal information such as what their roles are and what their last wills say. The daytime phase is split into two separate parts. The first is the discussion phase, where players are able to share information with each other and discuss on who they believe the evildoers are. One little tidbit about the discussion phase, if you want to send a message to a player privately, you can do so through a whisper. All you have to do is type a slash, W, and then a space with the player's name or position number. I find that position numbers tend to be easier to use because you're less likely to mess it up and then whatever the message is that you'll be sending to that player. As you can see with this screenshot here, I am sending a player who I believe to be another town member my investigative results from last night. After the discussion phase is the voting phase. The voting phase is a shorter phase where players are eligible to vote other players up onto the stand. If a player receives a majority, which I believe is half plus one, that player will be put on trial. If a player is put on trial, they will be given 30 seconds to provide a defense as to why they are not an evildoer. At the end of this 30 seconds, players will have the ability to vote guilty, innocent, or abstain from voting completely. If the guilties outweigh the innocence, the player is lynched and their role and last will are revealed to the rest of the town. The cycle continues until one of three factions comes out on top. And there you have it. Those are all the basics you need to know to get started playing Town of Salem. One last tip to end things off is to just have fun. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, but also don't be afraid to learn from your mistakes. This game is a fun game, but there is a learning curve to it. Keep that in mind if your first few games don't go so well. Remember, everyone had to start as a beginner at some point. Aside from that, my name is Overlord Moon, and thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed, go ahead and lynch that like button and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching again, and until next time, signing off.